Hey guys, this is Steven from Modern Muscle Extreme, and today we are doing the latest version of MMX 101. In today's video, we are going to introduce you to the MPVI 2, uh, as well as go over some of their features uh, and go in depth into what the tool is capable of. Okay, so one of the key features on the MPVI 2 is Bluetooth capabilities, and this is going to allow you to wirelessly log your vehicle as well as being able to pair a GoPro um, and log with a GoPro video log as well as vehicle log. Uh, and in the Track Addict app that HP Tuners has developed that you can download from the Google Play Store or the App Store, uh, you can overlay these two logs and send them to your tuner. And this will ultimately give you and the tuner more information to give you a better tuning experience as well as if you have any issues, diagnose an issue a lot easier. Alright, so today we are working with my 2009 Ram 1500, uh, but one thing you guys need to know is that if you have a 2015 and up vehicle, this is going to require an unlocked PCM. Now you can get an unlocked PCM from our website, modernmuscleextreme.com. It's going to require a VIN number, calibration ID, and uh, somewhat current mileage. Once you receive the unlocked PCM from us, you can install it and then you can begin tuning your vehicle. Now HP Tuners uses a credit system. Now any engine in the modern Mopar platform uses two credits other than Viper. Um, but if you have a 2015 and up vehicle that has an 8 speed in it, this is going to require an additional four credits for a total of six. Uh, this is why we sell them in two credit and six credit versions on the website. All right, now that you've installed your unlocked PCM from us, uh, or if you have a pre-2015 vehicle, you're ready to download the VCM Suite and VCM Scanner. Go to your browser, and you're going to go to www.hptuners.com. All right, go to Downloads. And then all you need to do is download the latest full version. Now this could take a little bit depending on how fast your internet is, so give it some time. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to connect the vehicle and we're going to resync this device. Alright, what I can recommend you do <clears throat> is plug the USB-C into the bottom here first before you plug it into the OBD2. We're going to take the device, plug it into the OBD2 board on the vehicle drape this around here. We're going to take the, S, the USB cable here and plug it into the USB port on our PC. Okay, so the first thing we need to do with the new device is we need to open up the editor and we need to sync the device. And by doing this we go to help, resync the interface, The device is now resynced. All right. So now this, what this does is it actually applies the credits that you've purchased uh, with the device, whether it be six or two, depending on whatever vehicle you're working on. Um, so that way you can license vehicles. All right. So the next step we're going to do: key on engine off. All right. We need to hit the green arrow here. That's to read the vehicle. All right. It's going to pop up this window. We're going to hit gather info. Now, in this case, we only have one controller that it needs to read. If you're working on an eight-speed vehicle, or even a, a NAG vehicle that has a separate TCM, that is going to be another module that it can read, and it'll pop up down below. And you want to read entire on both. So in this case, like I said, we only have one to read. You select the read option, and it begins to read. This can take anywhere from uh, 3 to 15 minutes depending on the year of the vehicle and how much data it's got to um, that it's got to read. Alright so once it's done saving the original backup you want to start a new folder whether it's on your desktop um, or whatever it may be and you're going to name it original backup. Alright okay so once you have saved the original backup 
what I can recommend you do uh, is save a copy of it. All right, so you want to go to File, Open. You want to right click on the original backup that you saved. Uh, you want to copy it. You're going to select the right click button again in the folder and you're going to paste. All right, this is going to paste a copy and you can open up the copy and start modifying the copy or you send the copy to your tuner so that way they can modify it. All right, so we'll open this up. All right, so now this allows you to go into the calibration and modify whatever you need to modify um, or your tuner will modify it. Now, if you have purchased the HP tuners option from us and you've purchased the MDS delete kit, um, I can show you how to turn off MDS uh, in this stock calibration to maintain your stock calibration and just disable the MDS function. And that is fuel, the fuel saving, and then you have the MDS disable. I'm going to disable that function. All right. Next, you're going to want to do is save as stock disable. Wow, disable MDS. All right, so it changed the name up here, so not, that way you do know that you are in the stock calibration, you disabled the MDS, and that's the only thing you've done. The next step would to be is, you know, you cycle the key on, engine off, and now you have a download button here to write to vehicle. You select that, write calibration, and then you begin writing the calibration. Now again, this is going to maintain the stock factory calibration just disabling MDS that's the only thing we've changed some of these can take two minutes some of them can take 15 minutes um, depending on the year of the vehicle and what's done um, most time after every time that you've loaded a tune it's going to ask you to cycle the ignition or turn off wait 10 seconds and then turn back on in this case we just cycle the ignition close all right and then you're able to start the vehicle okay so now we have our vehicle running we've just disabled the mds um, and we can go to the scanner here. All right, anytime you want to connect to a vehicle, you're going to hit the blue car up top to connect a vehicle. And then if you'd like to record, you hit the record button. Now again, depending on the tuner or how you have it set up, this layout could look different um, this is the way I have it set up. This is what my personal preference is. Um, but uh, that can vary between person to person. So a couple other things that I want to touch on here. Shut the engine off. Key on engine off. We have stopped recording, but we're still connected to the vehicle. This is the, you know, if you had to check engine light, you can read DTCs. It'll tell you if there's any DTCs connected. Uh, this will also show you your readiness monitors. So that way, if you are trying to get your vehicle inspected, you can actually connect to your vehicle before you go uh, and make sure everything is completed. If nothing is completed or if some things are not completed, you know that you need to do whatever you need to do or contact your tuner. Um, to get those completed so that way you can pass your inspection. Um, clear DTCs. Now, if you actually want to clear the DTCs from the vehicle, you hit the uh, controls and special functions, the engine diagnostics, and you can hit clear DTCs. Now, this will also reset all the readiness monitors. So if you are not 
prepared to do that, then do not do that. Um, the other couple things that you got here is throttle learn. Um, if you had a case where you needed to relearn the throttle, whether you're replacing the throttle body or replacing the PCM, you can actually do a throttle learn on some years. Resetting adaptives, this will actually reset anything learned from the vehicle. For instance, fuel trims here. Um, you know, typically while you're tuning a vehicle, uh, or your tuners tuning a vehicle, they're going to look at the long-term and short-term fuel trims. Um, in order for a tune to be modified, before you start and take another log, you're going to want to reset the adaptive so that way he gets the most up-to-date information. Um, gear and tire adjustment. Uh, in this vehicle, there are other vehicles that have the same function, and then you can disable or enable traction control. This is what we use for our dyno um, to allow us to, you know, do pulls on the dyno. All right, so thank you for tuning in on the MMX 101 segment on HP Tuners MPVI2 functions and how to use it.